Hey guys, today I just want to talk about the top mistakes to avoid when making an offer on a home. I'm Tim Hyam with Remax Center City Realty here in Prince George, and today I just want to take a couple of minutes to discuss some mistakes you can avoid so you can make a successful offer on a home. Before we get there, if you're a home buyer and you're not sure about how to find the right place and you just want to chat about the process, I would love to connect with you and help you out so that you can get into a great home of your own. Text want to buy a house to the number below and I'd love to connect with you. So getting into the offer, what do you need to know? First, you need to come up with a price. Okay, now this is important and offering incorrectly could lose you the home. You're gonna discuss the state of the market, whether it's a buyer's market, seller's market, or a balanced market with your agent. You're gonna talk about how long the home has been on the market and if there's any other interest or competition on the home. You're also gonna discuss comparables in the area to get an understanding of fair market value for the house. And all these factors together are gonna to help you decide whether you're gonna offer you know, equal to list price, below list price, or above, and all those situations could happen. And depending on the situation, getting this correct could be crucial to getting your home for the right price. The next thing you're gonna to need to make sure you have is your deposit amount. Again, depending on the situation, you may want or need to put in a large deposit or a small one. Discuss that with your agent. But your deposit amount certainly makes a difference, okay? Now, next up, conditions. These are the things that the offer is conditional upon or subject to. Not having a correct understanding of the property type and therefore not including the correct conditions could land you in a lot of trouble down the road. Another thing here is having too many conditions in a competitive offer scenario. You can avoid this by doing your homework up front, making sure your agent has provided you with all the available information on the home so that you can strip down to just the bare essential conditions. Another factor here is asking for too much time or too little time to remove your conditions. That timeline matters to the seller. So you wanna be asking for enough time that you can get it done, but not so long that it's going to be a deterrent to the seller. Next up, included items. Now asking for too much here or even having too many included items in the contracts can cause difficulty uh, in getting final financing approval because a lender doesn't want to lend money on stuff that is not actually part of the property. So appliances, window coverings, alarm system, etc. Definitely include those. Asking for the seller's boat or RV is gonna land you in trouble with the lender. Lastly, let's talk about completion, possession, and adjustment dates. A couple different potential issues here. If you're selling a home in conjunction with the purchase of this home and the proceeds of that sale are required to finance this purchase, you're going to need to coordinate the completion date so that you can have that happen or occur without a problem. Now, get it wrong and when it's time to close, you're going to be homeless or you're going to have an issue paying out the new property. Another thing here is not being flexible on dates in a competitive offer scenario. Often the right date for a seller could be the difference between accepting one offer or another. Make sure that you're not losing out on an opportunity for the right home because you're being sticky on dates when that's not really an essential term to you of the contract. All right, well that was quick, but that is it for this one. Again, if you're considering buying or selling, connect with me. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.